let's just consider this thought that we were just talking about. And uh, obviously it's just us, so we can't make everybody else, but we can. We can still do it. And uh, if that means, uh, Mike, when you feel the Spirit of the Lord moving and you do as you have often done, uh, uh, there's somebody here that uh, the Lord is wanting to do something in their own step. If they don't do it, we just need to do it. You know, and then, and then say, look, what I just did, you, you can do. You should have done. You know, not because we're, we're correcting you or ostracizing you or, or, you know, being critical or anything, but just to say that, uh, you know, as believers, these are natural, supernaturally natural for us. Mm-hmm. If someone, you know, you're sitting there, I mean, we're, we're we've, we've, another thing that's happened is there's been abuses, obviously, in, in Pentecostal circles, even in charismatic, where People have, you know, prophesied doom and gloom, you know, negative things. All you got to know is that anytime you prophesy, it should be edifying. It should be uplifting. I've taught this for years, over and over again. So, you know, it's like they used to say, if you haven't got something good to say, don't say anything at all. That's basically Bible. Right. You know, or if, if you don't have anything good to say, join my mother's quilting club. <laughs> I don't have something bad to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anytime we prophesy, anytime we, uh, there's an interpretation of tongues, it's going to be positive. And I think people are just afraid that they're going to say something or do something and then be criticized or critiqued for it. Look, it doesn't have to be profound, you know, in, in the sense that it doesn't have to be so deep that we need, an, you know, somebody to come in and unravel all this. I mean, we, it's, it's, Tongues and interpretation, not translation. It, it's interpreted, meaning it, it isn't going to be exact. It doesn't sound like the old King's English. <laughs> it's going to be however you talk, whatever your background, it's going to come from that, but it's going to be ordained of God. Yeah. And we've, you know, we've got you know, these ideas. I think people think that when they feel a, a, an unction in the Holy Ghost or a you know, kind of a spurring to say or do something, that they overthink it then. Now they think, how am I going to say this so it's going to sound spiritual? Right. It, that's a misnomer. You know, so that's, a, that's just not a factual way of thinking. Mm-hmm. If it comes out of your mouth, it's spiritual. You are a spirit being. Right. But we, as Christians, we have made uh, these acts, this fruit uh, to be, you know, trying to make it sound so spiritual that we undermine the very thing that we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we read the Bible, we read it in the King James, so we think, okay, that's, that's the way it should sound. That isn't the way they talked. They talked just like we did in their own vernacular, you know. Yeah. They, when they were prophesying and things, they weren't being and thou and all that. They were just talking just like we're talking right now. The Lord says, He's going to bless you. He's open. He's going to open doors. You know, whatever it is that you feel led to say, and just keep in mind: if negative things come up, that's not God. It's either the enemy or it's your own natural thoughts getting in the way of it. So, you know, we. It's like I, I remember uh, people in in Pentecostal circles. They'd you know somebody would, would prophesy and then or or give message in tongues and then the interpretation you knew that there's a half a dozen people out here that have an interpretation right, right. We, we all have got the same spirit but right. they're all waiting on somebody else That's to right. give it because they also know that somebody out there is going to be critiquing it. that was God that wasn't God right. I mean that's just the mindset that some people have you got to blow that off you just got to forget about it. this is between you and God if you do it you you've succeeded simply because you listened to to the voice of God and responded. Now it's not a, you know, God God declares that victory, victory. You, you've done exactly what you what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. That revealed God's attitude or mind about some given situation. Yeah. Now that's why it says the Bible says 
that if you receive a prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. So if there's somebody out there that doesn't want to receive that as coming from God, that's their problem. That's they're the loser. Mm -hmm. You know, they got to, you know, we don't discern the body so much of the time, meaning we don't give respect to one another as being in Christ's stead. So if, if Roberto or Sally or Jamie, they give a tongues and interpretation or they speak a prophetic word. Now, if I'm just dealing with the flesh, I can accept or reject that. But if, I, if I'm discerning the body of Christ, if I'm respecting the Christ that's in them, I'm going to receive that. And then I'm going to get the benefit from it. They're going to be blessed simply because they did what the, what the Spirit led them to do, regardless of how anybody responds to it or not. Amen. But it's up, to the, it's up to us to accept that prophet or to recognize that uh, Jesus Christ, who is the, uh, the word of prophecy, I mean, he is prophecy. He's the fulfillment, you know, the, the whole thing, Amen. is in that individual. We're, we're cheating ourselves. I mean, the church is, is cheating itself out of the blessings of God. Yes, yes. And they're depriving other people in the church and outside of the church in the same way. It's, it's selfish. I'm sorry to say that, but it seems uh, like a person's inhibited or self-conscious, we call it. That, that's exactly what it is. Self-consciousness is pride. Self-consciousness is self-centered. We say, well, I'm just, I'm just shy. Well, get over it. You know, that's, that's self-consciousness. That's your, con you're too conscious of you, and not a conscious, not conscious enough of what the spirit's trying to do. I know it's not easy. I mean, we're, we're, we live in a world that's, you know, does that critiques and judges and you know all that kind of stuff. But we're supposed to have freedom. To whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So, but you got to act on that. You got to, you know, you got to be willing to, to respond. And it ha it's true in every service. You know, it's, it's amazing how, you know, when you have uh, uh, Eastgate Tabernacle, House of Prayer, isn't it weird how the Lord ministers and speaks and moves in that? Mm -hmm. Why? Because everybody comes expecting that God's going to, and so they respond to it. Mm -hmm. Now, that should be Every service should be like that, right. if not, if, if more so, because you have more people. Right. So the more people you have, the more opportunities there are for ministry, for God to use people. And he, he, he uses our uniqueness. I mean, that's the beauty of it. We're not supposed to be cookie cutter here, and everybody says it the same way and does it the same way. If that were the case, we'd only be able to minister to us, to one person, you know, to ourselves. So, yeah, anyway. That's, the, that's what we need to be focusing on, I think. And uh, if we do it the way, the way I think the Bible teaches it, it's not spooky. It's natural. It's not bizarre. It's just, it's just people loving other people, right. which is the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> so it doesn't have to be all you know, mystical and freaky. Right. You just put an arm around him and say, you know, the Lord spoke to me. He wants you to have confidence that he's, his healing power is working in your life or, or he's releasing financial blessing into your life. Whatever it is that the Lord's saying to you, right. just say it like you would say it in a, in a normal conversation. Yeah. You know, you don't have to, hey, in the name of Jesus, you know, you're going to be healed. If you, you know, feel led to do it that way, I guess it's okay. But, I mean, think about the people that come that are not familiar with, with Christianese, you know, I mean, they don't get all of the, the stuff that we understand from over the years. If you just talk to them like, like you talk to them if you were on the job, right. only from a spiritual perspective, they get it. Right. It's it's the other stuff that they have problems with because it's it's like listening to another language, right. and they're trying to figure out what we're saying. It's not that complicated. I mean, it's just. It's just the love of God. It's just God trying to reach them with some positive. Yeah. You know, who doesn't want positive, you know? We got negative. That's what this whole world is about. You know? So right. this ought to be a place where it's always positive, where it's always edifying, where it's always uplifting, where it's always encouraging. 
But it's only that way when we're that way. That's what I meant Sunday. God's not doing anything without us. He can be here and we can feel him, but what good is that doing if ministry isn't taking place? If he's not able to, to, to speak and move through us, then we basically tie it into it. So, praise the Lord. Remember that all four of you. <laughs> because if it doesn't happen, you're the ones that's going to be at fault. It's your fault. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that negative? But, I mean, we need somebody, you see what I'm saying is, okay, so there's four. Well, okay, four. Three can, you know, one can put a 1,000 in his life, two, 10,000. And just keep that multiplication going. This would be, what, 10,000 would be, the next one would be uh, 100,000. The next one would be a million. And so right here we've got a billion or 100 million. 100 million. So, yeah, that's it. And if somebody does it, you know, it's like anything else. I, I, I was thinking of uh, those of you that were, were at, uh, at Joni's funeral. You know, we asked for anybody that wanted to give, uh, you know, say anything, uh, share an anecdote or whatever, some conversation they had or whatever with Joni. And, you know, there's kind of this, where you're thinking, oh, boy, here we go. Nobody's going to, everybody's too paranoid or everybody's too uncomfortable or whatever. But then you notice once somebody said something, you couldn't shut people up. It just, man, whew, it went everywhere then because they said, okay, it's okay. You know, it's okay to say something funny. It's okay to say something, you know, whatever. Just whatever it was that, that you felt like uh, touched you in your relationship with her. Well, it's the same way. If you notice when testimony time comes, that a lot of times it'll just be silent or even prayer requests. If one person will... will make a prayer request you'll see it just starts it okay, it's like they got the okay yeah. it's okay to say it it's okay to ask it it's okay to people are just funny that way they are like sheep in, the, in that respect they need somebody to step up first to make them feel comfortable so that they can do it so that being said the, the six of us then or seven can uh, initiate that in a church service See, it's, it's funny how sometimes I think, you know, when the, the, like Ro Roberto or Suzanne or Mark or whoever it is that's up here doing the opening, they may feel like, well, you know, what I had to say didn't seem to strike a, a note of, you know, whatever in people. But what I think what they don't understand a lot of times is what they're doing is setting the stage right. for the Holy Spirit to be able to move. Amen. So... Your willingness to share, even when you don't feel, I mean, because look, the same way preaching, you don't always feel like you hit the home run. It's like they used to say all the time, you feel like you dropped the melon, you know. <laughs> I've dropped more melons than I've eaten in my life, believe me. But it isn't always about your sense of it was a good message or it wasn't a good message. Because, you know, if one person gets something out of that, then you've, you've done what you were supposed to do. And if you did nothing more than in the case of, and the openings and different things, if you've done nothing more than give people confidence to say something themselves, to testify, then you've done what God wanted you to do. You've opened the place up for God to be able to speak. Mm -hmm. And so it's an important thing. I don't think everybody realizes how important that is, doing that opening, because it kind of sets the stage for the entire service. Mm -hmm. It releases God to have some liberty do things that he wants to do that he otherwise wouldn't get the opportunity. So if you if you struggle sometimes with what to say or how to say it or whatever, well, praise the Lord, join the club. The enemy doesn't want you saying anything. Right. You know? He, he wants you to clam up in the corner and be like, you know, you know, everybody's going to think I'm an idiot. I go home thinking that three Sundays out of the month. God, did I really say that? <laughs> you know, and then somebody will say something, and I don't know that I said it. And I'll think, God, I wonder if they thought, you know how you get paranoid and you start saying, well, geez, I wonder if they thought I meant <laughs> instead of that, and, you know, and that person said this, and I wondered what they thought, you know, I mean, and then it just escalates, and the next thing you know, you're just sitting around thinking, oh, my God, I wish I hadn't said anything at all. We should have just had 
prayer and we're home, you know, and we'd all been better off. But that's the way the enemy works. He wants to keep you tied up, you know, freaking out all the time, second guessing. You just do it and got to figure that, hey, listen, this is who we are. This is what we do. It's God's business, you know. Just do it and let God, Amen. let him do what he does. Amen? Amen. Okay, so let's, let's not have any more uh, cowards out there. Be bold. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Any prayer requests? <laughs> there you go. Mike. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I work with that. Uh, my daughter and my uh, grandson will also be there in North Carolina. And I pray that through all the time and break me from the uh, old mindset of her life uh, from things that the enemy planted years ago just to try to change the whole situation. Um, just traveling there, I see them ministry opportunities from here, there, and back. Uh, I'm very thankful to God for my wife. situations and I hate to dead end but basically I had to surrender um, uh, and as soon as I surrendered the Lord provided uh, just about as you and I were talking about earlier about the water coming up in the RV I mean I spent hours and hours and hours trying to put this fire plant and it just wasn't happening it just wasn't working it kept leaking kept leaking kept leaking and after I surrendered and basically gave it some time and started lifting it my spirit say this, I feel like this is what the Lord was saying to me when you were talking. Uh, the, the purpose of this trip was more than going to see your grandmother. As you said, your grandmother is the one who prayed for you. Well, her, see, her prayers are still continuing. Mm -hmm. And your trip out there is as much about the continuation of her prayers for her children and their children's children, you know, for her family. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that God is going to give you opportunity and favor to speak into people's lives out there in a positive way that's going to have an impact that's just the trickle down from grandma. Amen. So it's a birthday party for grandma, but it's also a celebration of what she has meant to people, spiritually speaking, and yeah. that'll continue on for generations and generations, and, and this trip will be no exception to that. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Feel that God can't do anything in their lives. You can 
something it, it's you know you feel you feel stronger you feel fresher you feel but I, I can't tell how many times I've come in here tired just blot out and <laughs> preach and I feel like I've had eight hours sleep I feel ten times better than I did when I came in a hundred times better whatever you know and that's true on in every situation when you pray for people you go away if you're praying for healing you go away with a sense of wholeness or healing it, it's there's something about it, it creates confidence, uh, boldness, if you will, assurance, uh, not just for the person but for yourself. So it, 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 it's a it's a twofold thing. Uh, it's that's why I think you know it's better to give than to receive in that sense, in terms of ministry, because you can't give without being a recipient at the same time. Amen. You can't be a blessing to somebody.
doing um, God can be praised and he's done a great group and I want to give praise to your part of it and uh, just keep going forward and I believe that it's going to be a very tremendous thing for God. Amen. That's why I'm saying too is that if when we pray, if we pray in agreement with God's word, that's <laughs> That's manifestation of God. That's 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 agreeing with God. That's what He's after. We're, we focus so much on the manifestation instead of on just doing what the will of God is. The will of God is to agree with Him. That's what faith really is. So then it's in His court. We don't worry about it. We just just do it, you know. And we continue to do that. And just like what John was saying, we don't recognize the impact that we have. But but just think about. In a church the size of this one can have a far greater impact on the kingdom of darkness and therefore on the kingdom of light than a church of 10,000 mm -hmm. if they don't pray, if they don't man, if they don't step out in the spirit and prophesy and lay hands on the sick and uh, tongues and interpretation, all the things that we know of as gifts. If they don't do that, it doesn't matter how many people are in that building. Right. It's just people. But if you've got 30 people that are operating in the gifts by faith, you could, you could blow this town wide open. Honest to God. I mean, that's the potential that any church has if they come into agreement with God. And that's what we're talking about. That's what, that's what the people need to understand. It's not about what we're seeing here. When, when he dealt with Gideon, I know we wear that out, but I mean, it's in the Bible for a reason. More than just historical. He stripped them down to, to where it looked like it couldn't do anything so that God got the glory. And they knew that it was God doing this and not them. Exactly. If he did, if he let it go with, the, with all the men that they had at the beginning and so on and so forth, and they'd had victory, it would have been them. Mm -hmm. They would have, even if it wasn't them, they would have still believed it was them. Right. So this way, God's saying, when, when this explodes, when this happens, there's not going to be any question about what caused it, Amen. what made it happen. Amen. You know, if we could make it happen, it would have happened. You know, we would have we would have made it happen by now. Right. So when it happens, and it will happen, and it has happened in the sense that in the spirit realm it has to happen there before it can happen here anyhow. Right. But there are there are principalities and powers and dominions that are being destroyed. Right. Every time we come together, we punch a bigger hole between. The lower heaven, the realm of Satan, prince of the power of the air, and the king of kings. Amen. And his kingdom, you know, manifesting on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So to draw back, that's what the scripture talks about. You know, any, anybody who draws back is not fit for the kingdom. Right. Because that's, that's how the kingdom works. Mm -hmm. By pressing forward, just continuing. Amen. All right. Do you know, you know? All right, let's stand. Oh, yes. Grandpa?
Sure. Stripes, he's healed. Amen. The same miracle that heals you is the miracle that saves you. Amen. The cross, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And I'll just say this I understand what you're saying, Jimmy, because it's always, you always wonder was he ever, you know, really, and all that kind of stuff. But I can say this without any doubt based on Scripture if he has believed, he's saved regardless of what his spiritual condition may be right now. You know, he may have, quote unquote, what we used to call backslide, you know, kind of go back into the things. But I, I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. But with God, it's a once and forever deal. And it wasn't about how good your grandpa was in the first place that he got saved. It was about how good Jesus was. Hallelujah. And his grace <laughs> to yeah. extend it to your grandfather who yeah. just believed. And that, that doesn't change. Once a person saved, they can't be unsaved. Yeah. They can turn from the walking in Christ and get back into the old life and behavior, but it doesn't unsave them because they were never saved based on their righteousness or their goodness in the first place. They were saved by one thing only, and that was believing Amen. in the finished work of the cross. So we know people's spiritual lives often. Assurance for you, you know, and also for his healing. Look, God, nothing's impossible with God. That's the that's the bad thing about hospitals because all you hear is negative. I mean, that's just all you hear. I hate them, you know. I mean, I know that there are good things that come out of there, but all you're hearing all the time you're there is what might happen, what could happen, what has happened, what's you know, what it looks like, what the progress, all this stuff, and it's ninety nine. thought he was elderly eyes but was actually has a brain aneurysm <clears throat> and then uh, went in on a Thursday night a few weeks ago uh, just God was there and then there's uh, some people I know his friends uh, his wife and his husband both you know all my friends and his wife were there and uh, stuff that happened God time it was, it was, it was an ordained time um, not only as I testified earlier that uh, his response was already changing before I left, but he walked in the work box with me. <laughs> yeah, he's, thank he's, the Lord. He's not totally recovered. He's going through rehabilitation. It's every week you're down. It takes a month to physically get back in shape and stuff like that, but yep. he walked in the work box with Hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. Well, praise That's God. Right. Praise Amen. the Lord. <laughs> right. Amen. All right, so there's a testimony for you. Let's just believe God. finished in the
the name of Jesus, we declare healing. We declare breakthrough in every area. We thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit, the ministering spirit of Christ in every situation spoken here tonight, every circumstance, every individual, Lord. We declare the victory, the victory in Christ, amen, over every attack of the enemy, every lie, every deceitful uh, weapon that the enemy uses. No weapon formed against us can prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's the whoever or whatever, can stand when we declare with our own tongue the promises of God, the glory of God. Amen. We thank you for it all right now in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. It is finished in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God.
Come, Holy Spirit, come to this place. We will embrace your presence.
There's freedom in your glory. 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 So say. deliverance in your glory. There's deliverance in your glory. There's deliverance in your glory. There's deliverance in your glory. So say Let your glory abide in this place, Lord. That the freedom of the fruits of your spirit will be revealed, Lord. That the chains of old mindsets, the chains of old thought patterns, the harvest come, let your spirit move, let your spirit move. You said we were all called to be kings and priests, Lord. Let no man, no woman lack, no child lack, Lord, that the boldness of the Lord be upon them to reveal your kingdom. Reveal your kingdom. Reveal your kingdom. Reveal your kingdom. exactly what I want to preach about today. So, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let's just get right into the Word of God. Thanks. Thank you, Jesus. 
Mike and Roberto for ushering us in to the presence. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want to just uh, take us to the Word of God and what the Lord has spoken in the information this night. And you'll see as uh, Mike was ministering there at the end. I want to begin uh, with a couple of scriptures from uh, Philippians chapter 3. That's my outline. Praise the Lord, yes. I don't know who this belongs to, but it will certainly come in handy. Hi, I can't remember your name either. <laughs> oh, how often would we all have liked to have had one of those at some point? Praise the Lord. Okay, uh, we're going to start with Ephesians, or excuse me, Philippians chapter 3, uh, verses 20 and 21. Hallelujah, Jesus. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I want you to pay particular attention to our conversation is in heaven. Praise the Lord, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18 through 20. Ephesians 2, 18 through 20. For though, or excuse me, through, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Praise the Lord. So, as a citizen of heaven, you are entitled to whatever the king has declared and ordained for you. Praise the Lord. Now, I know some people are, are not comfortable with that word entitled, but that's exactly the right word to use here. We didn't earn our right as citizens. Christ earned that for us or accomplished it for us at the cross. But we are for sure entitled. Praise the Lord. All right, let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has made us meet or made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Amen. So you are a citizen in God's kingdom and you have been elevated to the highest possible status within that kingdom as a joint heir with Christ. Amen? Amen? Your performance, this goes to what uh, Jamie was saying earlier, you are a citizen in this kingdom, and you, your position has been elevated. You're seated with him in heavenly places. You're in the same position as Jesus, right? That's your status within the kingdom. And your performance or your behavior didn't get you there. And therefore, your performance or behavior doesn't affect your status with God. Hmm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's still the truth. In spite of everything else that we've ever heard. Just like your righteousness cannot be negated by your behavior. Your citizenship can't be negated either. 
Now, I'm not saying that you should, you know, that living like the devil is okay. I'm just saying once you've been born again, no matter what you do, it doesn't change your status with God. You are a citizen. You are elevated to this position. Even if we fail, even if we don't pray enough, even if you allow old sinful habits to creep back into your life, nothing negates your citizenship in God's kingdom. Nothing. Now, you can make bad choices, and you, have, you, uh, you can have... Uh, to face the consequences of those choices or suffer from self-inflicted pain. We've heard about people that go through things like this. Sometimes we do. But even while we face the natural consequences of our actions, God still remains faithful to us. He doesn't nullify our citizenship when we blow it. Now, you don't take what the Bible says about your inheritance lightly. I don't think we've emphasized it enough in the church. Righteousness is way more than a theological term. Righteousness is God's stamp of approval on you. Understanding that approval is the key to receiving the inheritance that God has ordained for you. Praise the Lord. What's the inheritance? What's the, the, the blessings that are promised in that inheritance? Well, I think first and foremost, ought to, we ought to look at John chapter 10, verse 10. And I'm telling you, church, if we really get to where we understand this and believe it, the fruit of the Spirit will show up. Peace, love, joy, all that will be there because it's already there. It's masked sometimes by the, by the works of the flesh because we're still in the flesh. But if we ever really get this and understand this as our identity and who we are and how God sees us and the way God relates to us, listen, it will lighten you. Not enlighten you, it will lighten you. It'll, it'll, it'll change your countenance. I mean, it'll, it'll cause you to be happy. Amen? The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, Jesus said. I am. Amen? Come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. So the, the word for abundantly here is translated from a Greek word, which is parisios, and it means overflowing or to have a, above or over a certain quantity or quality. So what God's promising us right here is a life that's overflowing. The enemy is coming with sickness, disease, poverty, all that. Comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give us a life that overflows with blessing. An overflowing life. Praise the Lord. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. This sounds like overflow. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. This is exactly what we were talking about at the very beginning of the service, or even prior to the beginning of the service. It's the overflow. It's the, by, by our spiritual nature, we know the good things that belong to us. Our flesh is always getting in the way of that. Why? Because it does exactly what John said. 
It tries to get us to focus on what we're seeing and not on what we know. Amen? There's facts, and then there's truth. There's only one truth. There's all kinds of facts. The facts are changing all the time. The truth remains the same. It's forever settled in heaven. The question is, how does it get settled on earth? The same way, amen, that the kingdom, the things that are in the kingdom are manifested on earth by us believing it and confessing it, coming into agreement with God and declaring it. That's who we are. It doesn't take, you know, great mountains of faith. It just takes us to be who we are and act that way. I mean, just act in agreement with God in spite of what we see, in spite of what... It, it doesn't take faith, you know, to, to shout the victory uh, when they tell you that your uh, lottery ticket won. The faith is between the time you bought it <laughs> and uh, when they tell you you won. Amen? You know, I'm just, that's obviously a lousy example, but it'll work. I mean, it just, it doesn't take faith, you know, when the doctor says, you know, your test came back positive. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, yeah, praise the Lord. But it, the faith comes from the time that they did the test until you get the report. And if you get a negative report, you still praise the Lord because you know that's just a fact. It's not the truth. The truth is by his stripes you were healed. The truth is everything you set your hand to prospers in spite of what the bank says. Amen? Amen? So we've received not the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world goes strictly by the Thomas. See, touch, taste, feel, the senses. The spirit operates by the knowledge of God. It has nothing to do with the natural world. When we try to mix the two, we get confusion. We start trying to get manifestation instead of just coming into agreement with God. Praise the Lord. All right. So now this isn't, a, this isn't an original thought here with Paul. He's actually quoting, uh, not verbatim, but, uh, but he's, he's paraphrasing something that Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 29 and 11. That the Holy Spirit speaking through him. says, I know how I feel about you. Right? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end or a hopeful end, a positive end in any situation, in any circumstance. That's how, that's how God thinks about you. That's his thoughts about you, that they always end positive. Someone said earlier, all things work together for good to them that love God. All things are not good. We know that because we experience all things. But all things still work together for good because God has, if we know what his thoughts are towards us, and he says his thoughts towards us are for a hopeful end, a positive end, in every circumstance. If we knew, if we really understood, but we don't. The depth, the breadth, the height, the, the, all that God has for us, no man has ever even imagined yet. And some of us got a pretty good imagination, but it doesn't even begin to, to plumb the depths of all that God wants to do for us and that he has provided for us. Amen? Look at Psalms chapter 5 and verse 12. See, we've got to just quit reading the Bible and start believing it. doesn't do us any good to memorize Scripture if we don't then really believe what it is we've memorized. If it's just, you know, so we can pass the test, we're supposed to be gaining, you know, a, a renewed mind from this so that we think differently. We literally begin to think the way our spirits already are. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. Who's the righteous? We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Thy, Lord, wilt bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass, compass him as with a shield. So he gives us grace for everything, and he also 
is like a shield, a protector for us in any situation, any circumstance. Praise the Lord. God wants you to walk in confidence. Amen? Not in your ability, but in this kind of knowledge. Knowing that he is with you and in favor of you, God is your protection. He'll never leave you or forsake you because do you see God? No, but you still believe that he's there. You still believe that he's everywhere. Well, he's not only everywhere. He's surrounding you with protection. I don't see it, but I know it's a fact because he said it. And all of us have experienced it. It's happening all the time. We don't experience it all the time, even though it's happening to us all the time. We're just not aware of it, except at certain times when we, uh, you know, are 10 seconds late for the intersection where somebody else just got killed. Or, you know, you, you name it. It happens all the time where, you know, we, somebody else does the same thing we did and bang, they're gone and we're still here. Protection. Provision, right? Proverbs 28, verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Now, I know that's true because I saw a Bigfoot uh, show the other night where they were searching for Bigfoot, and they were tracking him. And the guy that found these tracks said he would... Uh, he would take two steps, and then his foot would turn at a 45-degree angle to his body. Then he would take two steps, and his foot would turn at a 45-degree angle from his body. He knew this was Bigfoot because nobody walks that way. How does he know what Bigfoot was doing? Because he looked back over his shoulder and realized every time he did that, his foot went out at a 45-degree angle from his body. So it must be true. Amen? The wicked. Bigfoot. Amen? He's fleeing when nobody's pursuing, but he keeps looking because he thinks somebody's pursuing. <laughs> See how I just wove that into This is beautiful. See, Bigfoot searches are very spiritual. Trust me, John. <laughs> but the righteous are as bold as a lion. You know, I, I discovered something when I was doing drugs and alcohol. You know, I was always looking for the cops. I mean, I was always paranoid that they were, you know, in the car behind me or next to me or sitting at the next light or, you know, whatever. I don't think about cops anymore. Why? Because I'm not doing anything to worry about it. Unless I'm speeding. But you know what I mean? I'm not... The wicked are always looking for somebody to get them. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Why? Because we have the protection of God. God's taking care of us. Amen? God wants you to be full of courage and full of confidence. Amen? Amen. You will exude that. Other people are attracted to that. You know, you get in a, in a tight situation, and everybody, the people don't want to hear, Oh, my God, we're all going to die. They're already believing that. They need somebody to say, Calm down. It's going to be all right. We're going to get out of this thing. You know, it's going to be okay. Somebody that has some confidence and has some boldness to trust that God's going to do the right thing, that God's going to do what he promised he would do, and that's protect you and provide for you and give you favor. Psalms 65, uh, verse 4. And you don't have to be, you know, God's, you know, evangelist for the new millennia. Just you. You is who he's talking about. Every one of us is special, has a special ministry, has a special uh, position in the kingdom of God. We're all kings in this kingdom. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts, we shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Amen? It's, it's like, you know, the scripture talks about this grace is so that we come boldly 
to the throne of grace. Amen? Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. That's us. And causes us to approach unto him, come boldly to him. Because of grace, we can come boldly to him, expecting that we're going to get whatever it is we're asking for. We are entitled to it. Now, this, I know, like I said at the beginning, we get, we get uncomfortable with that word, but that's what he's telling us. We didn't, we didn't deserve it. I'm not saying that. We didn't earn it. Jesus gave it to us. Therefore, we are entitled to it. That's, how, that's the attitude that he wants us to have when we come to him. And we're still, you know, kind of coming in the back door. You know, like the guy who didn't work all week but still wants his paycheck. <laughs> he can't face the boss, but he still wants his check. That's not us. Right. Our income, our, our blessing, our provision has been earned. Mm -hmm. We didn't earn it, but we are entitled to it because he did it on our behalf. Yes, Praise God. Amen? All right. John... Uh, Chapter 1, verse 16. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Praise the Lord. So we've got these rights and protections and provisions promised to us as citizens of heaven or citizens of the kingdom of God. And these promises have a purpose. Praise the Lord. So why does God want us to have these blessings? Do you ever ask yourself, does he just want to spoil us? Or The answer is simple. So that God can glorify himself through us. Praise the Lord. Promises of joy, healing, peace, strength, eternal life, restoration, protection, provision. Amen? Now let me show you, let me show you something. David uh, is an archetype of this, you know. And look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 46. We're all familiar with this. It's David and Goliath, right? But we know that there's also a, a, a spiritual metaphor. There's an actual fact, but there's also a, a truth, a spiritual truth that God sh shows us through this. This day, he says, will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I'll give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God's desire to expand his own glory within humanity. He told Abraham, because you've believed me, you're going to be the father of, what, many nations. And you're going to be blessed so that you can be a blessing. Yeah. Why? So that God can be glorified in all nations, not just in Israel. Not just in Abraham's family, but in all nations. Yeah. Now, if you study David's life, and you study the Psalms and the writings of David, the principle always in David's mind is God's glory. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't help but sense that this was one of the main reasons God entrusted David with so much influence, in spite of the fact that David had flaws galore. David was a messed up guy. But God gave him tremendous influence. And I believe that's why he gave him this influence. You know, his rise to power, it wasn't smooth. His life was a roller coaster of events and emotions and issues and circumstances and failures and successes and so on and so forth. Much like most of ours. Right. It was filled with danger, failure, pain, setbacks, risk, heartbreak. He had family issues multiple times. 
But in the midst of all of that stuff, and much of it was his own fault, in the midst of all of that junk, God was continually faithful to David, mainly because God knew that blessing and protecting David would lead to an expansion of the glory of God to other nations. God had an agenda, and David couldn't screw it up. God has a plan for your life, and his thoughts towards you are a good end. Even when you mess up. Why? Because God can use you to bring glory to him through other people by exposing other people to the God that's in you. So we'd be smart to be like David, don't you think? When it comes to our attitudes and our emotions, we ought to kind of think about David a little bit when we're going through the crap or when everything isn't happening exactly like we think it ought to. God's still with us. God's still going to do for us. God's still going to protect us. He'll heal us. He'll deliver us. He'll pro- but he's doing all of that for a multitude of reasons, partly because he just loves us because of his grace, but also because he wants others to experience his glory. The whole idea of the end time revival is God's glory filling the earth. How does that happen? The same way it fills a church service. When people step out in confidence, in boldness, in courage, believing God's going to do what God said, if I'll just lay hands on them, if I'll just prophesy, if I'll just let give the interpretation to the tongues, whatever it might be. So just don't forget, the ultimate purpose for the provisions or the protection God gives us is all about his love and power. But not just about love and power, but about his love and power being demonstrated through us to the world. That's how they see it. It doesn't happen. People don't just drive down the road and say, oh, look at the love of God. Oh, look at the power of God. Somebody has to demonstrate it. That's why he's faithful to us. The same reason he was faithful to David. They look at David and they say, look, what a dope, what a jerk, what a loser. But God's with him. That makes all the difference in the world. And it's the same way with us. The world needs to see God is faithful, even when humans are unfaithful. Mm -hmm. Even when grandpas fail, God never fails. He's faithful. That's why I say, I believe once saved, always saved. I I used to despise that term. But that is what the Bible preaches. You can't get unsaved once God has saved you because he is faithful. He made the covenant with himself, not with us. That's why it was him that hung on the cross and not you and I. Praise God. We we ought to be the most confident people. We ought to be the boldest people. We, We ought to be the most assured of out the outcome in any situation. People are attracted to that in the natural. How much more when it has a spiritual truth behind it? Amen? Amen. The world is starving to death for the body to rise up and manifest. We're asking God to manifest, and God's asking us to manifest. When we start doing the works of God, God will start manifesting, believe me. But he cannot manifest absent us. He wants his glory to be seen, but his glory can only be seen through us. That's why he's faithful to us. That's why he doesn't deviate, even when we deviate, even when we screw up. His, his, His idea, his vision of us, his reality of us, remains at the highest status in the kingdom of God. Amen? If you believe that, you'll find your inheritance is always available. Abundantly so. So that it can be poured out to others. So they can experience the same glory that you experience in God. Can you say, praise the Lord? Amen. Give him a hand clap. Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise God. Amen, amen. Now that's the truth.
Believe it, it'll change your life. More importantly, it'll change everybody's life that you come into contact with. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Get out there now and show the glory. Praise God. Get bold. Get brave. Get courageous. Get crazy for Jesus. Hallelujah.